Okay, now we are going to see how we go from the um, uh, state space equations from this uh, first order equations to the simulink block diagram. Okay. So here we are. We have these two equations like that and then we have this equation here for this. So what we can do is mm, mm, let's start um, perhaps let's take a little picture of this and uh, we uh, start uh, this so that we have a space in here to do the uh, drawing here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, steal this picture here. I love these tools in here. We can just take this picture in here and what I'll do is I go farther down in here and then we'll put a title here. I don't want to put it in here. when we say obtaining a block diagram yeah? block diagram from these equations okay one thing I want to say before uh, I get going on this is that in Simulink you have also already a block diagram like this. In fact, the, you could directly put this into Simulink. The entire thing <coughs> it has a block diagram like this. That has a little. Uh, it, 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 it looks like this. It says a, AX plus BU like this and then it has y is equal to cx plus du. There is a, a block in Simulink that could actually take the entire thing, this, this whole thing, into a block diagram like that. But that's not what, what, what we're going to do right now. We are saying obtaining the block diagram from the equations in first order. Let's just put a little line in here so we concentrate on what 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 the issue is in here and we are going to come in here and then we're going to paste the picture that we just stole it from above to here there we go these are the equations yeah let me put it in here so I'm going to begin creating a block diagram for this and to do this, do you remember how we start the block diagram? Where is our starting point? So the summations. summations, okay? This one is easier because it has the most terms and uh, this one has just one. So I, I, would, I, I would suggest we start with this, okay? So um, in here we go and do, okay, we do this uh, summation point. What's the output of this summation point? Uh, this one here on that summation point is going to be dy2 dt, right? This is here. And in here you have um, one that says minus uh, b over m y sub 2. <coughs> and then you have another one that says uh, minus k over m y sub 1 yeah and uh, you also have one that in here that we have that says that this input is f over m right okay now do you realize what I just did I took this equation in here and I started with the with transforming it into a little picture in here um, everybody sees this step here yeah 
I'm going to switch colors now so that you will see that the next step are ones that I'm going to build upon this very basic thing. If we integrate this, like 1 over s, what do we obtain over here? Huh? This is y sub 2. And then let's just maybe make it go to, to a scope in here so that we don't have hanging signals in here. Yeah. But do you see immediately it's like, 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 it's almost like if you hear a note. Do you see here this y sub 2? It calls for some uh, relationship between this and this term. Because all you got to do to get this term in here would be to have y sub 2, you multiply it by a gain here, which would be b over m. And then you will, you will have this, like that, connection. There's obviously a minus sign over here. Uh, this was a plus sign. And this one we cannot do anything about because you see it's, it's sort of hanging in there. It's because it comes from the other equation, from this guy. So what I would do is, again, to be consistent with the colors, I just would go and I say, okay, look here. Um, you obtain what was the derivative that we obtained in this dy1 dt like this and what do you have over here is y sub 2 right yeah so I have transformed this equation into this picture now I to be consistent I switch colors and then I will go into here and I say, okay, this is 1 over s. And oh boy, here, here we go. This is y1. Let's just put it as a scope in here. There you go. Very good. Now do you see now this y sub 2? How do we complete this now, this y sub 2? That y sub 2 is here. So it, may, it makes sense that I just bring it from there. This is multiplied by one, or we could just directly connect it like that. And this y1, do you see, like I told you, it's as if you hear the note, if the, my, my par parabola in there. In here, if I have y1 that comes from here, and gets multiplied by 1 over m, and then this guy gets connected over here, and c'est fini. Okay. I have built my simulink block diagram. Now, what you have to do in the case of, of the uh, crash test, uh, you will have not two, but four in here. So that is the, uh, this is how you obtain a block diagram from the equations which are in first order form and that came from the uh, free body diagram. Yes? So on the summation, um, when you have like the negative signs, do you not have to put the negative in like where the V over M? On here? Yes, you don't put negative in the... Uh, yes, 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 you do this. I, I, I really meant to do that. I meant the other one, though. Like, uh, this when guy? You multiply, when you multiply by... No, uh, so why is it multiplied by V over N? Yeah. Does that not have to be negative because it's a mixed point of the negative sign? <laughs> if you do that, if you put a minus here, then you have to put a plus over here. Okay. I think it's either yeah. or, but not to both. I mean, I, I used to be confused about the same thing, so I appreciate that question because the, does everybody see what he's saying? What he's saying is, should we put the minus sign here or put, I put the minus sign over here? And my answer was one or the other, but not both. Okay. So this is your, um, this would be your uh, block diagram. And with this, you could go to Simulink. You would say to go to Simulink. Okay. All right. 
So that, that's how we produce the, the simulink block diagram from these equations. What, um, my point is that these equations in a state in, uh, in this uh, first order form, so I'm, I'm just gonna put it here to make sure that everybody is on the same, this is a first order form. That form is also called Cauchy form, but first order form. From these equations, I produce this block diagram. Do you realize that these equations uh, produce this block diagram? But I could have these equations produced by the bond graph approach as well. So then uh, what we have is uh, from the bond graph equations, we could produce the very same thing. And in fact, what the lab is trying to get you to do is just that. Yeah. Going back a little bit, once we generated the matrix, is there a step we'll have to do from the matrix for the quiz? Like, is there no, absolutely no. Okay. That's as far as I would like you to stop. Okay. I mean, you know, crawl before we sure. walk. I mean, we. I, I cannot ask you. We're going to do other things with it, but I mean, okay. not for Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. Everybody, okay with this? Okay, so now what we can do is uh, I can show you how to get here using the bond graph, bond graph approach as well. So why don't we uh, steal the picture that we had over here so I don't have to redraw it and then we will uh, uh, see and this is wonderful to steal these pictures. I go over here and I say, <coughs> yeah, please, I copy this, all right? Now there's not going to be a, a block above the ramp, see? So. Okay. Just so that we are safe and, okay, hold on. So we'll stop now. <coughs>